views of Vancouver so Asian. I'm so used to being that one Asian girl when traveling, but here in Vancouver, Canada, I just blend in with all kinds of Asians. Chinese, Filipino, Korean, Japanese, Mongolian, Indian. Turns out, half of Vancouver are Asians. Actually, more than half. A neighbor in Richmond is the most Asian city outside of Asia. So I was curious, how is it to live in a place where you're not the poor minority, but the majority? What happens when the tables are turned? And of course, how is the food? There's a certain look that Asians have here. They look at me like, kind of like trying to locate me where I'm from. Like, which Asian is she? You know? <laughs> Mongolians are really hard to guess, I guess. One thing I like about Vancouver is that it's been built for the people. So you have designated uh, bike lanes and there are no freeways in downtown which is great. And I thought I would be Ubering and lifting left and right, but actually I ended up taking the public transportation all the time. So, America, maybe I have something to learn here. Vancouver seemed tiny. I thought I could finish it in a day, but no, so many zakayas, pochas, ramen spots, I didn't know where to start. But what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Asian food? Is it sushi, kimchi, or this? broth-filled, juicy dumplings, dancing in the hands of skillful aunties, with meaty steam billowing from bamboo baskets. Xiao Lambaos are said to be the best here at the Dynasty Dumpling House in West End. I saw some aunties making like dumplings real quick and just like, you know, doing their really handy work. I was like, oh my god, this is one of the most amazing places. Hello, place here, fresh beer. Oh. Jellyfish on cucumber. Okay, maybe just by itself. Mm. Wow! I thought it's gonna be very on the chewy and tough side, but this is just you, your teeth just sinks into it real easy. It's pretty. Mm. It's pretty soft. Wow, I like this combo. Oh, you know, I think dim sums always look very simple, but it's actually very hard to make because you really have to nail the thickness of the flour, right? And also, the dim sum should not stick to the pan because you don't want to lose the soup in it. And then you really have to nail the meat inside. You really have to know to make it juicy, to make it flavorful. Look, you can see how the weight is distributed, right? This part is very heavy because it has a lot of soup in it. And it's a pork dumpling, which shouldn't have that much soup in it, but this is like super juicy, and the juice is just flowing from left to right, right? Ooh. Wow, how can you resist this? Dip it in. And at first, don't put it in your mouth right away because it's super hot. Mm. Uh, okay, I got all the juices. Chinese culture is strong in Vancouver, stronger than any other Asian cultures, because after all, they're the ones who laid the tracks, built the railroads. One Chinese died for every mile of track between Calgary and Vancouver. But the Chinese might is truly felt in Richmond, a neighborhood south of Vancouver. If Vancouver is 20% Chinese, Richmond is 80. Richmond? It's mostly East Asians. So, for example, you can see all the storefronts are in Chinese, sometimes even without an English explanation. Beijing ducks being cut, monster crabs, mandarin fish, people speaking in their mother tongue that you feel embarrassed to speak English somehow. You're in North America's most Chinese city, my friends. So they were asking like, so where are you from? Like, oh, it's my first time in Vancouver. Where do you think I'm from? They're like, uh, Chinese? I'm like, what? No. I'm like, when I said, uh, Mongolian, that I'm Mongolian in Chinese, they're like, what? 
I think I might have one of the best dishes with beef. I don't know how they balance it so well. The sweetness and the saltiness and spiciness all together. It is just sorcery for me because when I cook, I only put salt. I, I do not put any like exotic spices, but this one is really savory. Mm, intensely satisfying. But have you also heard of Hongkouver? Not only people from mainland China chose Vancouver, but many from Hong Kong came here after the British handover to China. Chef Welbert Choi of Forge is from Hong Kong, like many Vancouverites, and is now leading the restaurant in Foraged Food. But what does Foraged mean? Welcome to Forage, all about the local fare of Forage. Everything from British Columbia, uh, local beer, local wine, local cocktails and spirits. As far as the food goes, if it's season, it's on the menu and they make everything from scratch. And then the concept of Forge is to share the food like family style. I forged the happy hour menu and got the bison bone marrow with bison au jus and Saskatoon berries and the award-winning barbecue duck chowder. The first chef of this restaurant actually used to make it with pork. The second chef was a very acclaimed uh, chef from Hong Kong made this one with duck. And oh, let me tell you, no wonder it won awards all over the place. Yeah, this one won as the best chowder of the city of Vancouver. This is spice and bone marrow. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go bare bone marrow right now. <laughs> I think this is where I get religious all of a sudden. Mm. <laughs> Vancouver's skyline is pretty. Would you like to live here? Yeah? Are you a Chinese or a Hong Kong billionaire? I'm only asking because mostly it's the crazy rich Asians who own them. They own one third of Vancouver's real estate. So when wealthy Asians price locals out of homes, making the city the second most unaffordable in the world, supposedly with dirty money, it's been brewing up a nasty heat soup in Vancouver. With COVID, it got even worse. Bloomberg said that more anti-Asian hate crimes were reported in Vancouver than in 10 biggest U.S. cities combined. Especially during COVID, everybody was saying, go back to China. Canada first. Some even say that a former British colony is getting colonized again by the Chinese. Yes, the Chinese billionaires from Hong Kong flew here, bought real estate, and really inflating the real estate prices. So I had to ask a local about the complexities of Vancouver life and met with Joe, creator of YouTube videos, interviews with Vancouverites on a whole lot of topics, including Asian identity. We grab kushiyaki at Zakushi, a Japanese spot that makes skewered grilled meats over charcoal. I started my videos like six, seven years ago, and the reason why I started it was like I just heard a lot of like people saying that Vancouver people are so like closed out uh, to eat, um, to themselves, kind of like spoiled and like don't, they're not friendly. Yes. In terms of that, so I'm like, okay, this can't be true. And so the reason why I started doing that is just to prove it's not true. Now, Americans have jokes for us, like we don't actually say a boot all the time. <laughs> so sometimes we say A. I, 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 I have to call myself say A. First of all, American politics, I'm not going to go in deep into politics, but American politics versus Canadian politics. American politics is really entertaining. It is super entertaining. The only thing we have is... It's like a TV show, right? Yeah, it is. There's a stereotype of Canadians being very nice and friendly people, but then I was researching and that Vancouver was the Asian hate capital of the world and it's even worse than freaking New York or any big cities in America. So how do you guys feel during the COVID? Does it feel the tensions or is it more like just sensationalized news? I I think a lot of the news kind of like glorified it a little right. bit. 
when you say like the, you know Asian pay capital, like there's a lot of things that don't go reported, right? There's a lot of there's all the late racist stuff that doesn't go reported. Only, only the big things get reported, right? You know, like um, uh, what you call it, graffiti on the you know, Asian walls or you know statues. Or whatever. Uh, but for me personally, for myself, born in Canada, of Asian background, I wasn't worried about on the street because because I, I, I know. How did you think? I was more worried about my parent, my mom, because she doesn't speak English. She's not really aware of her surroundings. And like in the news, where I saw people like you know elderly Asian, Asian people get pushed or shoved or kicked or or whatever, I, I actually told my mom, don't wander into the sketchy areas of the city. Right? Just like any other city, there's always sketchy areas, right? So I, I told my mom, don't go there by yourself. Don't wander in by yourself. Right? And if you do, be careful. Because you never know. News can be skewed. And little do they talk about what good the immigrants did. Not all Asians are billionaires. Not all want to park their money and leave. Like Joe, they want to contribute. They care for the city. Asians heavily invest in medicine, education, arts and culture. Hell, some even dedicated their lives on the tracks. And one thing that people don't really think about is the capital that came with them. By investing, they also invest in the school, in, uh, in the school system, education, make donations, and of course, let's not forget that they brought their delicious food with them. And the Richmond public market, I'd say, it is not as touristy. You don't see any other people walking around. It's only the locals who want a nice Sunday lunch or breakfast. And I can see that, yes, it does not look neat. It does not look like the Granville Island. But you can see these like giant crabs just, you know, ready to go. You have these delicious uh, different dishes from Hong Kong, from Malaysia, from mainland China, it's just like you can have all the plethora of food here. It's much more satiating, satisfying, and just, I'm pretty happy on my decision. Vancouver has always been a magnet for immigrants. So who else comes to Vancouver? How are they changing the city, the food? Coming very soon in my next episode. But I also want to know your thoughts. What do you think? Would you live in Vancouver? Are you a local? What do you think of the food, the people? Okay, love you guys. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.